In the days and weeks after the Great Collapse, people were asking questions about what caused it. And there were a great many different ideas, a lot of speculation. But after about a month or two, the questions began to change to, why can't we fix it? Why can't we bring everything back up online like it was? As soon as one area would be turned on, the demand would be so great that it would overload what they had fixed and it would all collapse again. It became impossible to have a full, working, functioning power grid simply because we didn't have the people. So many had been lost in the fighting and in the riots that it became a fool's errand to try to create any large group because there would always be others wanting to tear it down. And many asked a question, who were we really as a country? Now, in the last few videos, this channel has talked about this idea of infidelity or unfaithfulness, and many have wondered why I focused on it. Because there's a lot of different definitions of infidelity, of unfaithfulness, and the main story, the primary story across the mainstream media today is evidence of this. Some people have said, well, financial infidelity is basically an indicator of other kinds. One usually goes with the other. One is not really worse than the other. I guess it would depend on the degree and severity, all this. But this is the story of changing the rules after the agreement has been made. This idea of student debt forgiveness, where a whole bunch of people made looking back now, poor decisions, taking out way more loans than they could ever pay back, and now they want to be given a mulligan. How many of you remember from yesterday when I talked about giving yourself a mulligan? They want to start over. They want a clean slate. They don't want to have to pay anything back. But the government knows that money has to come from somewhere. Why? Well, First of all, it was supposed to come back with interest, but it's been sitting on our books, the nation's books, the people's books, as an accounts receivable. See, those weren't gifts. Those were loans. So we have had that. Those of you who understand business know what I'm talking about here. We've been able to list this as an asset. This amount of money owed to us by our own people that when they went out, got educated, got their jobs, the money would come back. Well, wait a minute. We're just going to erase this? We're just going to erase this. Applies to individuals making 125 grand or less. You see, that's the key. You see, you can't use the IRS to go after student loans that haven't been repaid. So what are they doing? They're just going to create new taxes and increase those that are already in existence because then, if the money doesn't come in, they can take their 187,000 new IRS agents and their $80 billion fund and go take it from people forcibly. See, that's what this is all about. It looks good going into an election year. All of this debt forgiveness. Because young kids who've taken out all these loans, they don't understand how money works yet. They don't understand that there can be no forgiveness of it. The money has to come from somewhere. They don't understand the concept of accounts receivable as an asset because most of them don't study business. Now, who remembers and have read what the Bible says about covenant breakers? Because that's what this is. This is covenant breaking. This is unfaithfulness, financial unfaithfulness. That is way worse than physical. Who remembers from Star Wars? 
the scene with um, Lando Calrissian and Darth Vader, where he says, I'm altering the deal. Pray I do not alter it any further. <coughs> because that's what they can do. Because they're the ones with the guns. So, yesterday, when I said, if I walked in to my, let's say it was my wife, somebody I was married to, on a bed with a credit card I didn't know about, running up a bunch of money, to me, that would be worse than infidelity. Actual sexual infidelity. This would terrify me a lot more than her with some dude. Yeah, the thing with the dude would sting a little bit, but this could be something that could destroy lives of children and go on for decades and decades, and you may never get it back. And I'd like to paint another analogy because there's different ways to be unfaithful other than just financially or sexually. Let's say I've used this couple before. It's a stock photo of a medieval couple. They're in love and they have this future that they've planned for each other. Well, what if in 10 years, this is what he looks like? And because of his decisions to be lazy or to overeat, to not exercise, you know, he's no longer able to fulfill his husbandly duties or do the things or even ride horseback for that matter. Would you say, ladies, that he had been faithful, even if he hadn't slept with anyone else? Was he faithful? No, of course not. Of course he wasn't faithful. Ergo, he's the one that violated the marriage agreement. And in a place where we have a constitution that gives you certain rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, that marriage should be legally annulled because of his infidelity. You see, this is the thing, guys, and this is where the rubber meets the road. I'm not going to listen to any Christians out there pontificate to me about how they have been uh, completely faithful to their husband or wives for years and years and years when they look like this. You see, it's easy to not go have an affair when you're 450 pounds. No woman will have you. She might have a little bit of an easier time, but sitting at home, you see, this is not, this is not evidence of how good of a Christian you are. This is not evidence of how uh, faithful and moral you are. You see, if you look like this, and you can say we've been married for 25 years, and we've never fooled around, see, that's an achievement. This is not. When you let yourself get so disgustingly fat and morbidly obese <clears throat> that nobody will have you other than the one person you married years ago and all you do is sit home at night, cram stuff in your mouth and watch Netflix and Hulu, that's not being faithful. Back in the 90s, there wasn't a woman alive. And I'm going to stand by this. I don't care what you say. There was not a woman alive that would have turned down Ben Browder. And guys, I don't even have to tell you. Everybody knew who Claudia Black was. Back in the 90s, back when Stargate was on. See, if these two, looking like this, could say, yeah, I've turned down every offer. I have uh, overcome every temptation. That's, that's a bigger achievement. That's a much bigger achievement. And if you don't, if you think I'm kidding, I've showed this video before, I'll show it again. Restless Heart, I'll Still Be Loving You. The uh, video compilation by Nitro Texan, just like it sounds. N I T R O T E X A N. Look this up. In fact, I'll first pin comment, I'll give you the link. 
See, I love it when Christian websites and Christian people try to address the idea of infidelity. Where they show the guy walking in here, dressed all like a beta. And there's another beta guy here. And this is supposed to be some uh, evidence of infidelity. Even the church wouldn't recognize this as infidelity. I mean, you might get your nose bent out of shape about it, but they're, everybody's fully clothed. They're just smiling at each other. Yeah, holding hands or whatever, but... You see, they've had to even create new types to accommodate all of the American, North American insecurity. See, they have the big ones, the physical affair, the financial. Emotional cheating, emotionally relying on someone else. Really? Is that biblical? Is that part of your biblical marriage? Is that is that an emotional adultery? Can you show me chapter and verse in the Bible for that? Sorry about that. The cyber cheating. The physical cheating without sex, which is hilarious, which we've covered. Um, 16th century church with the, the whole ED thing. Women asking for annulment, annulments, pardon me. Micro-cheating, object cheating, where you have a, a hobby that distracts you. It's all forms of unfaithfulness. And even the Bible says, well, even if you think about it, even if you think about it, you're already guilty. Even if you think about it. Try proving that one in a court of law. We've even had fun with this scene from the Orville, which I thought was hilarious because an atheist created it. You see, even in the show, he literally admits he hasn't been around for eight months. That would be, to the 16th century Catholic Church, evidence of him not doing his husbandly duty to be there for her when she needed whatever she needed. But, of course, him not understanding the Bible in the least, but being an atheist, would call it cheating. It's hilarious. And this is the delusion, and the, the main delusion, remember when we talked about back here, why there wasn't enough people? Do you know why there wasn't enough people? Because for years and years and years in this country, because of this being a possibility, there has been this push to teach kids the value and honor of celibacy. Yes, that's right. Parents are like, you know what? Your spouse can cheat on you and this bad thing can happen and that bad thing can happen. And if you have kids, oh, the divorce can get ugly. Just don't bother. Just be celibate. It's so much easier. Don't bother getting involved with anyone. And if you do, just wear a ton of protection, but no relationships. I'll give you these links to uh, women that have the ability to go before courts in the Middle Ages. But this idea going away of demonizing the idea of doing the thing that creates babies. This is going to be the reason this country fails. Because we have for so long now demonized the activity. Or put so many shackles on it. Well, first you have to meet this kind of a person. And you have to, of course, have a high school education. And you have to go to college first. And you have to get your degree. And then it has to be this kind of person. And then you have to make sure their Facebook profile is perfect. And their Instagram profile is perfect. And that they've never made any mistakes in life. And even then, even then, make sure you wait a really long time. Don't have too many kids. Anybody who has any other arrangement? Oh, yeah, you see, you can't have this. You can't have this. And if you think I'm kidding about this, South Korea records world's lowest fertility rate again. Why? The woman who writes this article nails it. And I defy anybody out there to tell me this isn't the case in North America. Analysis by Jean McKenzie, sole correspondent for BBC. A crisis is brewing. 
Sorry about that, guys. Still working on the voice. A crisis is brewing. If South Korea's population continues to shrink, there won't be enough people to grow its economy, look after its aging population, and conscript into its army. Politicians have known for years this is coming, but have been unable to fix it. They have thrown billions of dollars at trying to convince people to have children and are still scratching their heads as to why this hasn't worked. It's easy to see if you look at it in reality. Money, of course, is the factor. Raising children in South Korea is expensive, and many young people are sinking under astronomical housing costs. But this is also about opportunity. Pay attention. Meaning there's another choice. Women in South Korea are highly educated, yet far from equal in the workplace. The country has the highest gender pay gap of any rich country. Most of the housework and child care in South Korea still falls to women, and it is common for women to stop work after having children or for their careers to stagnate. Essentially, many women here are still forced to choose between having a career and having a family. Increasingly, they are deciding they don't want to sacrifice their careers. As one woman put it to her, we are on a baby-making strike. Why? What's the point? What is the point? The idea has been demonized. It's unhealthy. It causes all sorts of problems. It can be done in ways that don't cause children. Seriously, there's an entire industry, billion dollar industry out there, dedicated to showing people how to engage in the activity that's meant to create babies, but to do it in a way that doesn't. And the vast majority of Christians in this country go right along with it. Teaching their kids, don't have babies. Don't, in fact, don't even get involved in that activity because there's no way to do it right that you'll know about anyway until you're in your mid to late 20s. And that's the case. Think about what American Christians teach their kids. Don't do it at all unless you're married. Well, okay, when can I get married? Well, after college. Or at least after trade school. If you're, you know, I've got a guy, okay, out of high school, 18, 20, 21, make sure you get a savings account. Okay, now, now that you're financially ready, now we need to find you a girl. <clears throat> and she's got to be perfect. You got to check out her family, check out her Facebook, check out her Instagram. Last five to seven years, you see anything suspicious? She doesn't go to church? Sorry, no. No, you can't have a baby with her. Nope. Nope, not that one either. So how many years is it going to go by? And then, okay, so you found the right person. Then what? Maybe it's the right person. Maybe it's not. Do you see what's happening? This example that's being set right now in our country with the morbid obesity is going to lead to a catastrophic collapse in the total amount of human beings with any values like ours on the planet. So when this happens, there's no fixing it. You can stockpile as many dried cans of beans as you want. It's going to take you backward, not forward. And I'll say it again. A couple like this, that would be a challenge. When all you knew you had to do was just look at somebody the right way. And that's all Ben Browder or Claudia Black would have had to have done in the 90s. That you could have a partner like that. Millions and millions of men and women, respectively, followed Claudia Black and Ben Browder. And there are lots of other couples that way, too. And this, by the way, this is from, they were never married. They were married to other people, which made it a thousand times worse. This was from a, a screenshot from the show. 
their chemistry on stage was incredible. So you can't tell me that that challenge, and the reason I bring it up, is their challenge to remain faithful compared to theirs? Night and day. Night and day. Couldn't compare the two. And especially these days, with everybody looking for any little reason to point a finger and say, oh, and this is what, you know, this is why I don't really have a really high opinion of modern day Christians. I read the Bible and, you know, I have my relationship with God, but modern day Christians have no use for it. Because they're always looking for a reason to destroy a marriage, to destroy a relationship. Oh, he's doing this. Oh, she's doing that. Oh, this is going on. Oh, you can't tolerate this, that, or the other. I'm sorry. This, to me, it would sting, like I said. But if I had been gone for eight months and turned her down for eight months, what the hell was I thinking? Which was the case in the show, by the way. You can go read the script. Seriously. And given what went on with the church hundreds of years ago, this is nothing new. So, I will leave it there. This has been my whole point. Is financial infidelity worse than cheating? You bet it is. You bet it is. Thousand ways to Sunday. Because that's what's going on. They are changing the terms of the deal before the deal has been sealed. They're taking money out of one pile and saying, okay, we're not going to get it from this group of people. We're going to go try to get it from this other group of people that we can use armed IRS agents to attack. They can't go after these people. They know it. But they still need their accounts receivable. In real goods. That's why they're not talking about this. About tax increases. Because they know what they're going to have to do. And I'll leave it there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. And if you really want to see a great video. Restless Hearts, I'll Still Be Loving You. By Nitro Texan. Absolutely fantastic. Million views. Million views. And not even the original version of the song. Take care. God bless, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.